This incident happened to me last year on Halloween. My little brother and I were home alone since our parents had gone out to a Halloween party. They had tasked us with handing out candy to the trick-or-treaters. This bummed my brother and I out because we had made plans to go trick-or-treating with a few of our friends. Our parents told us that we were too old to still be trick-or-treating and that we could instead invite our friends over to the house and hang out there. My friends declined my invitation to come over because they still wanted to go trick-or-treating, so that left me home alone with my brother handing out candy. A lot of people stopped by our house, and by 10 p.m. almost all the candy was gone. My brother and I decided that we'd eat the rest. We were sitting on the couch watching a scary movie, stuffing ourselves with candy when there was a knock at the door. I stormed off the couch, wondering who the hell could be knocking on our door this late. I assumed that it was just some late-night trick-or-treaters. Even if that was the case, I had turned the porch light off and the Halloween decorations off, which should have been a dead giveaway that we were out of candy or that we weren't home, so I assumed it was my parents. Being cautious, I looked through the peephole and saw a suspicious man standing on our front porch. He was wearing a black hoodie with the hood over his head, which made it difficult to see his face. The only detail of his face I could spot was that he had a beard and dry and crusty lips. There was no way this guy was a trick-or-treater because he wasn't wearing a costume and he was far too old to be trick-or-treating alone. His hands were stuffed in his front pockets of his hoodie and he also looked very thin. Every single red flag went off in my head about this guy. There was no way in hell I was gonna open this door. Still looking through the peephole, I watched as he knocked on the door again. He seemed desperate for us to open the door and he was shaking a bit. It wasn't that cold outside though, definitely not cold enough for someone to be trembling. He was giving me a bad vibe and I wanted to get rid of him as soon as I could. We're out of candy, I shouted at him. I watched as a smile spread across his face. It wasn't a friendly smile either. Are you alone in there? The man asked, almost in a mocking voice. His voice was dry and raspy. Should I call the police? My little brother asked me quietly, gripping his cell phone. The man let out a low grumble and said, Sounds like you're not alone in there. I continued to watch him through the peephole. His hands were still wedged tightly in his pocket, and he was still shaking a bit. I began to wonder if he was armed. I decided to take action and spoke to him in the most intimidating voice I could. Get the fuck away from my house or I'll call the police, I shouted. His smile faded and he bared his teeth. His teeth were piss yellow, and I concluded that he was probably some homeless crackhead. He had a look of fury plastered on his face. Fortunately, he left without trying to break in, probably because he knew I wasn't fucking around with him. I didn't stop watching him through the peephole until I saw him completely off our property. My brother and I breathed a sigh of relief and decided not to call the police. My brother and I were a bit paranoid after this, and watch TV until our parents came home. We didn't tell them about the man, since he hadn't really tried to harm us. Now when I think back to this, I wish we had called the police because maybe we could have been able to prevent a murder. You see, the next day, we found out that the elderly lady who lived a few houses down from us had been brutally murdered. Her neighbor had found her lying on her front porch covered in blood. She had been stabbed multiple times in the chest and neck, my brother and I immediately knew who had done it, and we told the police what we knew. They couldn't do much from the information we had given them, since we hadn't seen many details of his face. They went on a hunt for the man, but never caught him. I blame myself for that poor lady's murder, because I could have prevented it from happening by just calling the police. I think the most disturbing thing of all is the fact that he didn't take anything from the old lady's house. Her house had been left untouched, but he could have gone in and taken what he wanted since her door was wide open. This means that he just wanted to kill. This was his only intention. He didn't want money or jewelry. He only had the urge to murder. I'm a 23 year old female and I attended the Halloween costume party this past weekend. I had gone with a couple of my friends to a mutual friend's house. There was a big bonfire, booze, 
and some of that green stuff going around, so there was a big crowd. To make matters a little creepier, the friend's house is far off the main road, no neighbors for miles, surrounded by sugarcane fields, and the nearest paved road was about two miles up from the dirt road that you had to drive down to actually reach this house. Given the natural spooky season vibe, there was a natural chill factor in the air. I was getting food from the food table when a guy walked up and stood across from me. He was wearing a burlap scarecrow looking mask. I've seen it before at party stores. It's creepy, yet very commercial looking. Psh, Halloween is just a night for girls to dress up like skanks, he said. Nice to meet you too. Now get away from the mac and cheese, please. I can't believe you actually left the house like that, he said. What did I do to you? I'm just trying to get my mac and cheese and buffalo chicken dip. I ignored this guy because I could immediately tell that he was hoping for some kind of attention. It's a little tight around the top, isn't it? Okay, Scarecrow. I don't know how Dorothy did things in Oz, but I can't control the ladies sitting on the upstairs balcony, and it's a Ghostbuster costume. I know, skanky as you put it. Have fun doing whatever it is you're doing, I said, as I got my food and walked back towards my friends. Something about the scarecrow seemed off, aside from his abrasive personality. I tried my best to avoid looking in his direction, but when I did, he was either sitting alone or attempting to talk to some girl that managed to find herself briefly alone. I had lost my friends for a short time, and my good pal the Scarecrow came over and had a seat next to me. He just sat cross-legged and let his arms drape over the surface behind him. Where do you stay at? He asked. I got up and walked away. I don't know what world he lives in where he thinks that I would answer that question. It's definitely not one that I live in. I knew probably about 60% of the party, but couldn't place his voice. It didn't sound familiar from the voice alone. Nerd moment but he kind of sounded like Brenton from Skyrim. I told my friend, whose party we were at, that there was a scarecrow being a little creepy for my taste. I asked him if she knew who it was, but she claimed she hadn't seen anyone in that costume. I pointed him out to her, but she said she didn't know who he was. It was getting late and I was attempting to leave. I was only one of maybe a dozen people left standing. The rest had either gone home or were dealing with alcohol-related roadblocks in their journey home. There hadn't been any sign of a scarecrow for about an hour. As I'm about to get in my car, look what the car dragged in. A six-foot-tall scarecrow man who thought it was a great idea to pop out from behind the vehicle. What's your fucking problem? I've been trying to talk to you all night, and you won't give me any of your time. That's the problem. You all look at people like me like we're not good enough. Jeez, this was uncomfortable. I wasn't talking to him because he was being disrespectful. He was mean and a jerk, and this was just another step towards being uncomfortable. I wouldn't give somebody like that my time. I told him that I wasn't interested and that I needed him to leave me alone. He kept rambling on, and I finally asked who he was. His response was simple and unsettling. He chuckled and said, I wouldn't dare show you what's underneath Carly Beth. That's a line from Goosebumps to those of you that don't know. I had to look it up because it sounded familiar. Suddenly, my friend's boyfriend ran over towards me and stopped when he was in between me and the scarecrow guy out of breath. Sorry, he said my friend's name and told me to walk you to your car, he said. He looked at the scarecrow and waved them off and told them to fly away, little cannery. The scarecrow guy turned away and left. Not sure where he went, but it wasn't near me. I was able to leave in peace, but I kept checking my rearview mirrors for anyone that may have been following me. Because I'm really cautious, I checked under my car for tracking devices. Maybe a bit of an overreaction, but I've never been kidnapped. I texted my friend and asked about the guy. She still doesn't know who he was, but she theorizes it was a party crashed who showed up with the intention of scaring people. Regardless, it was creepy, and I hope I never see this scarecrow again.
I told this story to many in my inner circle around the time it happened, but I figured I would make a post about it on here since it seemed to fit the theme. I can verify that this happened to me and isn't some friend of a friend story. Two years ago, right around Halloween, I was babysitting for these two ladies who each had a son. They wanted to go out, so I stayed at one of their houses and watched their boys. It was around 8 p.m. and the boys were sitting on the couch playing on their iPads and whatnot when somebody knocked on the door. I asked them if anyone was supposed to come over and they both said no. I go over and check the eye hole in the door and it's some guy in a gray hoodie deliberately hunched over so I can't see his face. Immediately, I'm like, nope, no way and don't say anything and start pacing around because I don't want to give him any inclination we're inside. A couple minutes later, I check outside the little window through the curtains and he's gone. I didn't want to spook the kids anymore and there weren't any more knocks, so I just kind of let it go as a prank. Cut to a few hours later and the moms get back. They ask me how everything was and I say the kids were great, but somebody had come to the door. They ask me what time and I say around 8 and one of the moms started freaking out and going through her phone. The other tells me right around that time, somebody had been making strange phone calls to them on a blocked number. They had disguised their voice and were saying things like, I can see you through your window. They didn't think it was serious because it didn't make sense in the context of where they were, but in retrospect, we're almost positive it was me he was looking at through the window. They escorted me to my car and I touched base with them later and apparently nothing strange ever happened after that and the ladies have no clue who it could have been but I'm just really glad that I didn't open that door because I have a feeling in my gut that it would have ended really badly. At the time this took place, I was 16 years old. I'm 25 now so I'll do my best to get the whole story down for you guys. It was Halloween in my small South Louisiana town. It was a crisp night. The temperature was in the mid 80s and the heat showed no signs of slacking off. I was walking around with my older brother and sister and our friend Brooke. My sister had gone as a cat and Brooke had gone as a witch. I made the awful decision of wearing a formal gown since I decided to go as a zombie prom queen I had a crown and everything. I was drowning in that dress though. It was so hot and the corset back was restricting my breathing. It was around 8.40 and all the kids were pretty much cleared out of the street. We were making our way to the park next to the city hall where my mother was supposed to pick us up. We were supposed to be there before 9. The three of us were about six blocks away at this point and my sister had stopped to talk to a friend of hers. I was not stopping though. It was close to the time that my mom was supposed to pick us up and I was not going to be late. Also, I was miserable in this stupid dress and just wanted to go home. I had carried on for about two blocks down before I noticed that my sister and my friend had both stayed behind. I was annoyed to say the least. I only had four blocks to go before I could lay down in my mother's minivan. Being alone in the dark, was starting to give me the creeps. The yellow street lights didn't do the ambiance any favors. I kept my pace and kept walking until I heard the rumble of a muffler coming up behind me. I moved all the way off the road. The large black truck came past very quickly and turned to the left in front of me. I passed the intersection and I only had three blocks left. Then I heard the truck again I never moved back onto the road, so I didn't bother looking back. It wasn't too strange that the same truck had passed again. The third time they passed, they slowed for a good 30 seconds or so. That's what scared me. I didn't recognize the truck, and the windows were tinted heavily. As soon as I thought I could see a bit of a face, they peeled out and disappeared around the corner. I made it another block before I heard the truck again. I was two blocks away from my ride and I was scared to start running. I already couldn't breathe because of this dress and I was terrified I would pass out. As soon as I heard the truck, my stomach wrenched. I still kept walking, only a good bit faster than I had been. I kept my eyes down 
and watched my own shadow as the headlights came closer. I heard brakes, and I had made the decision to run, but it was too late. I realized how close they were to me at this point. I felt a sharp pain in the back of my head, and I looked up the best I could to see an arm sticking out of the window. An eagle clutching a sword was tattooed on his upper forearm. He had my hair wrapped around his fist. Before I could really comprehend the situation, he pumped the gas and was dragging me down alongside of his truck. I was running as best as I could, clawing his arm. I was crying and screaming. The only thing that kept running through my mind was that if I tripped, I was going to be run over. This man was just laughing. I was completely helpless. As soon as he started to let me go, I fell to my knees on the asphalt. I tore my dress, skinned my palms, and my scalp was on fire. I was freaked out and hyperventilating. I stood up, wiped my face, then I looked around and felt absolutely violated. I looked back at the way I'd come from and realized that this man had dragged me by my hair for a whole block and a half. Once I ran across the street to the park, my mother was nowhere to be seen. I climbed into the enclosed slide and just curled up and cried. I don't know how long I was laying there before I heard my mother calling my name. I came out and she was walking up the street calling for me. I walked over to her and she looked me up and down and started freaking out. Apparently, I had blood on my face and dress from my hands. She ran to me and was asking me what had happened and kept looking me up and down for a gash or something worse. I couldn't find my voice. I just held on to her and cried. We spent the next few hours at the police station filling out a report. Long story short, nothing ever came of it. My sister got in trouble with my parents for not being at the city hall on time. She was grounded. My mother had actually left city hall to go look for us. She found my sister where I left her and my sister hadn't even realized that I hadn't stayed. I got into trouble for not staying with my sister, but didn't get grounded. I'm still pretty mad that the dress was ruined, and I lost my damn crown. I'm even angrier that this man was never caught. This Halloween, I will be out with my godchild trick-or-treating. It'll be the first one that I've gone out for in nine years since this happened.